Good morning, America. How you doing today? Hopefully, all our veterans out there are doing good. Today, we're going to just jump right on in because our guest has a previous engagement that he'll have to get to. But we're going to discuss, start discussing uh, v- VSOs, what they are designed to do, what they do offer, and hope you choose uh, the best one for you. And today's guest is Mr. Tom Porter from IAVA. And uh, I want to welcome Tom to the show. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing excellent, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Ah, thank you for joining us. And like I said, we're I'm just getting information out to our veterans there. And we're going to, periodically we're going to discuss different VSOs. Today happens to be your VSO, IAVA. So can you explain what IAVA st- uh, stands for? Sure, it's the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Uh, we're the largest uh, veteran service organization for post 9-11 veterans. Although we do have members from all eras um, and membership is free for all veterans, their families and their supporters. They can uh, find out more detail about IAVA at IAVA.org. And you can also join for free there again at IAVA.org. Yeah, let me go ahead and put that up on our screen here real quick. And there's some music playing. I'm not sure if you yeah. want that yep. on. Yeah, that music's going to come off here in a second. All right, there we go. IAVA website phone number. All right, and how did the IAVA come about? Well, uh, IAVA was started by Paul Rykov, our founder, um, back in 2004. Uh, he uh, was a 9 11 first responder and uh, Iraq war veteran. And he got back from, from his deployment in Iraq um, and he didn't feel the voice of the new post 9 11 veterans uh, were being represented um, on Capitol Hill in Washington. And so he set out to fix that and started the organization and started working um, on IAVA top priorities uh, at the time. Um, also working alongside the uh, the uh, the uh, established legacy organizations like I uh, like American Legion, VFW, DAV, and, and many others. And how did you get involved with the, with IAVA? Well, it was, uh, it was kind of by accident, actually. Um, I um, I had been uh, working in Washington, D.C. since 1996 um, on Capitol Hill as, a, in, as an energy lobbyist um, for more than 20 years. And I had also been a Navy reservist uh, throughout that entire time. I've always had the deployments and then came back to my, my job. Um, and at one point... Uh, you know, I had known that IAVA existed and I had followed them online. I was a member um, and I was trying to help them fill uh, a position uh, leading up their policy uh, efforts in Washington, D.C. And I was looking around uh, for people that might be interested. And I was handing them resumes. And and at one point, uh, you know, they just said, well, Tom, none of these people are working out. Um, and I said, well, I'm sorry. I'll keep looking. Um, and one of these days, uh, maybe when I'm retired, I'd like to be able to try do, doing something like that myself. And and they said, well, let's talk, Tom. And then before I knew it, uh, I was on my way to an interview uh, with Paul Rykoff up in New York City, and I was hired shortly thereafter. And so I kind of, it, it was an accident. Um, and I thought it was going to be originally, I thought it was going to be um, a short-term uh, deal. I would go in and do some good uh, for veterans and military families, and then probably go back to the energy sector, which, which I was happy with. And it turned out to be a long-term thing. And here I am more than seven years in. Um, I'm having fun. We're getting a lot done. Um, and it's extremely rewarding. I wouldn't have, have uh, done it any other way. Yeah, that sounds good. And now I know you're a uh, retired military. What branch did you serve in? I'm not retired yet. I'm still oh, you're not retired in, yet. Okay. I'm in the Navy Reserve. I've been in for 26 years. Oh, Later okay. this month, September 30th will be 26 years. Ah, all right. That's where I get the retirement. It's coming up. Okay. Now, I remember we had talked about that several months ago and just got my little information confused a little bit. Now, what services 
does the IAVA provide for the, their members? Well, the, our strength is our advocacy. Uh, we at our at the national level, uh, at the national level, uh, we work with Congress, the administration, um, to advance our priorities for our members and and post 9/11 veterans as a whole. But again, we work in in support of all eras of veterans. So, oftentimes we're working shoulder to shoulder with uh, all the other veterans groups that represent other eras. Um, and then, um, and then some of the many of the smaller ones and regional ones that aren't national ones. Um, so the strength is our advocacy. We also uh, we, we also advance our priorities not only on Capitol Hill and through the administration, but but by um, energetic use uh, of um, um, of the media. So we use uh, media relations, not only just uh, traditional uh, TV and radio and print media. Uh, interviews, but we also do uh, a great deal of social media interaction with uh, with the public and with uh, veterans and our members. Um, but specific services for members, we have what's called the Quick Reaction Force, at, uh, and you can find out more about those free services at quickreactionforce.org, quickreactionforce.org. And what that is is a, a, case, a, a case management system where all veterans and their families are assisted for free, regardless if they are an IAV member or not. And so many of those services will be uh, helping um, with VA benefits if they're having trouble um, breaking through the bureaucracy and the red tape. Um, if somebody's homeless, if somebody's having trouble meeting their, their rent or their mortgage, uh, somebody needs uh, referrals for mental health uh, care. So many things under the sun, uh, our caseworkers will will help for free, again, for free, uh, any veteran or family and their family members. Okay. Now, recently the PACT Act had passed. Do you have a, a group of people set up for when veterans come in with questions about the PACT Act? Sure, that's that's what the Quick Reaction Force will assist with as well, if they do have challenges with that. But uh, obviously, we would refer anybody first uh, to the VA and the VA, mm -hmm. uh, as you probably have seen, that even before the PACT Act was passed into law, the VA stood up their own very user friendly right. uh, web page just just for the PACT Act that says what it is, uh, who it benefits and how to sign up for new benefits. And you can easily find that by just Googling VA and PACT Act and it takes you straight to the page. Ah, fantastic. Now. I was uh, doing a little research on IAVA, and I see you have a pretty large membership. About how many members do you have? Uh, more than four hundred thousand. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty good bunch. And uh, now I I was able to meet some of your folks that work with you uh, during the past several months, and it was a uh, honor being able to meet you. And uh, if there is one particular item about the IAVA that you want people to to look into and become a member of what what is that one particular item well it's it's the the main thrust of our of our efforts on the policy um policy front in dc we focus on um the the, the needs of the post 9 11 generation um mm -hmm. and oftentimes those are signature wounds of the post 9 11 wars so traumatic brain injury ptsd um, many women who have uh, serving in greater numbers today than they ever have. So yep. we're trying to make sure that the VA has benefits that reflect um, more women in our force and in our veteran community too. Uh, we are advancing the interests of many of our members that want to see, want to use medicinal cannabis to treat their wounds of war. Um, we uh, did a lot of work to pass into law legislation that will establish uh, the Global War on Terror Memorial on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. So that's something that we worked hard on. Uh, and that's that's going to happen now because of the efforts of IAVA and other VSOs who fought to get that passed. Um, and then, now, of course, the toxic exposure fight that we just uh, got, went through that established the PACT Act um, and the many benefits um, uh, that that provides. So those are the main things that people should know. Um, in addition to that, we fought hard to establish the post 9 11 GI Bill. 
Uh, that was really important to us. And we have fought off several attempts in recent years to make significant cuts uh, to those benefits. And so that's something that we see is could be recurring in the future because it has in the past. So if you're interested in any of those policy items and more, uh, that's what we stand for. And that's where we put our energy. And we also have a, a policy agenda that they can see on our website at IAVA.org that has a more comprehensive look to what we do. All right. Let me go ahead and put that item back up here real quick. And I want to thank Tom for coming on and discussing the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, IAVA, with us today. And I just went ahead and put the uh, link for the website and the phone number up there for people to see. And I want to thank you, Tom. It was an honor having you on and hope you have an awesome day. Sure. Thanks for having me. It was a great time. Thanks. All right, folks. Yep, Tom had a prior engagement, so we uh, did have to kind of do that quick. Well, we'll get Tom back on here, and we'll, we'll discuss IAVA a little bit more in depth the next time. But now I want to uh, talk about... PTSD here for a moment. A lot of us have it. A lot of us deal with it. Try to deal with it. And what I'm trying to get to today is let's let's hear different ways you deal with your PTSD. How do you deal with when the demons come at you and you know you know an episode's going to happen? What do you do to fight that off? What do you do to deal with it? The chat line is open. You can, We also have a new uh, email, so I'll put that up on the bottom of the screen here. Okay, we'll have that flashing on the bottom. Yeah, tell me, how do you deal with it? Do you hide in a closet? Do you talk to other people? Do you use art as for therapy? Do you go to counseling? We got a lot of brothers and sisters out there that do suffer from this. And I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of them are looking for answers still on how to deal with this. So, you know, put it up on the chat or email me what you do. And on a future episode here, we'll go in depth on different ways to deal with PTSD. And also what I like to do, too, since today's going to be kind of a short program is if you are a member of a nonprofit or work with a nonprofit that helps veterans, send me an email. Let me know what your nonprofit does, and we'll get you on the show. Because this show is designed to help all veterans, not just Gulf War, all veterans. It's just called the Gulf War Advocate because I'm a Gulf War veteran and I advocate. So, but let's hear from all the other, uh, let's hear from the nonprofits out there. Let's, let's get conversations going to help ourselves. Let's see what this individual does in Montana. See if that program will work for a veteran down in Florida and vice versa. Oh, so I am looking for two to four Gulf War veterans that were exposed to sarin gas that'll be willing to come onto the show and uh, discuss their experiences. 
that's the new topic that I'm working on now. And I'm very, very uh, interested in hearing your stories. Matter of fact, the country is interested in hearing your stories. So let's not hide behind the fact that, oh, the government's not going to do anything. We, we proved that wrong when the PACT Act passed. We made change happen. So let's get these stories going. Let's get the information out there. And let's get change. Let's move some mountains again. But it's going to take all of you to help. We need stories. We need documentation. So please. Email me at tim at thegolfwaradvocate.com. And let's hear those stories. Now, if there's also a particular VSO that you um, participate with and you have events coming up and you want to advertise those events, such as charity raising or uh, free lunches for veterans, anything like that, send me an email. Let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll start posting all that on the show as well. All right. And, uh, well, sounds like my dogs are restless upstairs, so I think what we're going to do since this is a very short program today, just stay in touch. If you're not a veteran and there's a veteran in your neighborhood, check up on them. Give them a hug. Just make sure they're okay. Times are tough for everybody, especially veterans. So let's just keep out an, an eye on each other. All right. I want to thank you for joining us today. Sorry, it's a short program. But next week, next week. We are going to have a nonprofit on. It's called Veterans Off Grid. And they offer a different lifestyle for veterans to help deal with their PTSD and their toxic wounds. I know it's going to be a very interesting show next week, so stay tuned and join us. All right, America. It's a pleasure being able to talk to you every week. And I hope you have an awesome day today. Thank you.